Hey everyone, it's Sarah, and today I am back to talk about all of the fragrances that I wore last week. So, I've got quite a few here, actually, so I'm just going to go ahead and jump right in. The first one that I wore was Marc Jacobs' Decadence Oh So Decadence, and I adore this fragrance. This is beautiful. This is, of all of the Decadence fragrances, this is the biggest departure. Um, this has, like... This has a very beautiful, like, sweet floral aspect to it. Um, it's just beautiful. I love this one. But you can still kind of smell the decadence in there. But it's very, very um, muted by the sweet florals in this one. So, Oh So Decadent is Pear, Black Currant, Ivy, Jasmine, Magnolia, Lily of the Valley, White Amber, Raspberry, and Cashmere Wood. Um, you really, really get the pear in this one when you first spray it on, and then after about 15 minutes, the pear completely fades away, and then you're left with the Magnolia and the Jasmine and the Lily of the Valley, these sweet white florals, but you're still left with the sweetness of the pear. It's just beautiful, and that's, it's kind of linear. It kind of stays like that for the rest of the wear time. Um, this isn't the longest lasting perfume in the world. This, you'll get about four hours out of, a little bit longer on clothing, but um, this one doesn't hang around a ton. Like, it's not the best performing fragrance. Like, Decadence is a beast. It will last hours and hours. Um, this one, because it's a little bit fresher, a little bit more floral, uh, definitely doesn't perform like Decadence does. So, anyways, this is the first one I wore this week, and this is Marc Jacobs' Decadence Oh So Decadence. The second one is one that I just hauled for you and um, I have been able to give it a couple of good wear tests this week and I adore this fragrance. This fragrance is incredibly polarizing. People either really love it or they really hate it. Uh, it's completely based on your skin chemistry and what notes are amplified by your skin chemistry. Thankfully, mine doesn't amplify anything um, that I wouldn't want it to. And, but anyways, let me tell you what fragrance we're talking about. We are talking about Juliet Has a Gun Sunny Side Up. Oh, I adore this fragrance. The, the way that the notes are composed in this fragrance, this ends up smelling like a beautiful milky fig fragrance on my skin. Uh, a lot of people said that this just did not work for them. They could not stand it. It either amplified the pepper in it or they just couldn't smell it at all. Um, or that the coconut was really sickly sweet for them which I barely get any of the coconut in this at all. This, my, my skin loves Juliet Has a Gun fragrances anyways, but this one, um, nothing gets amplified. It's like you can smell everything, and like I say, it ends up smelling like a beautiful, milky fig fragrance on me. I just love this. So, uh, Sunny Side Up is... Amorous, Jasmine, Vanilla Absolute, Sandalwood, Orris Root, Jasmine, Coconut Milk, Ambrette, and Iso E Super. And I really get a lot of the Orris in this. There's a beautiful, creamy, powdery Orris Root. It's, ugh, I love it. And that, combined with the other notes, is what makes it smell like fig to me. Oh, I'm just, I'm head over heels in love with this fragrance, and I've already put a good little dent in this too because I've been wearing the heck out of it this week. So, anyways, that is Juliet Has a Gun, Sunny Side Up. The next fragrance I wore this week is Burberry Brit Rhythm for Women, and I love this fragrance. This is one that I probably would have never tried had I not seen uh, Maria Meliora talking about it. This is like one of her favorite fragrances. And she was talking about it being a lavender fragrance, and like I say, I have a very soft spot for lavender, so I snapped this up immediately. And I love this, which I love all Burberry fragrances. Um, let me just be real here. I don't think I've met a Burberry fragrance that I have absolutely hated. Um, I'm not in love with the original Burberry for women anymore because 
to me, I'm, I'm almost positive it's been reformulated. That peach note has been amped up in it. It's gotten really cloying and I just don't enjoy it anymore. But for the most part, I love Burberry fragrances and these are excellent quality. And if you want fragrances that are going to perform well, Burberry is your house. Um, these perform so, so good. So uh, Brit Rhythm is English Lavender, Pink Pepper, Neroli, Oris Absolute, Blackberry Leaves, Orange Blossom, Petalia, which uh, is a molecule and it's supposed to be um, Peony Accords. So that is what Petalia is. Vetiver, Musk, and Woods. This is gorgeous. Such a beautiful, sweet, green powdery lavender fragrance oh i love it so much and it lasts absolutely forever so if you spray this on you won't need another perfume like all day <laughs> so anyways that is burberry brit rhythm for her next one i wore is chanel chance edp so this is a gorgeous fragrance this even for an edp though or even the edp version i should say does not last on me at all. Um, I wore this to work and about four hours later I was like working and I was trying to remember what fragrance I had sprayed on that morning because I couldn't smell anything on me anymore. I was like smelling my shirt, I was trying to smell it on my skin, I could smell literally nothing. So uh, that is so disappointing to me about Chanel because these fragrances, like if you're my age, and you can remember back into like the 80s and the 90s and you remember Chanel from back then, these were absolute like performance monsters. They would last for hours and days on clothing. You could walk into your mom's closet and she, if this was like, if she wore Chanel as a signature, her closet would always smell like Chanel. That's how my mom was with Poison. like. Poison was her signature back in the 80s and the early 90s. And so every time I walked into her closet, that's all you smelled was poison because it would get on her scarves and on her jackets and like that's all you could smell. And that's how perfumes used to be and that's how Chanel used to be. And unfortunately, these are just a pale like shadow of what they used to be and it's so sad. I still love how this smells. I just, it won't be a work fragrance for me because um, I couldn't even smell it four hours later, not even on my clothes, and it's so sad. But it is a beautiful fragrance nonetheless. Uh, Chance EDP is Pink Pepper, Jasmine, Iris, Patchouli, Vanilla, and Musk. Very classy, very beautiful, really, really nice, but just a terrible performer. So again, Chance Chanel EDP. The next one I wore is another terribly performing fragrance, or terrible performing fragrance. And this is Erin Amber Musk. Um, I have tried so many of these from this line. And that is why I only own this one full bottle, because I found this for a really, really good price. But for me, for what these are, they are incredibly expensive and overpriced for being like a step above a body spray. Um, you can spray these on and an hour later you won't smell it at all, like I won't at least. Now, to be fair, this one uh, said, it said that this one is designed to be worn in cooler weather and I have only tried this in the heat, so I'm hoping that when it starts to get cooler out, uh, when I try it then that I might get a little bit more wear time out of it because it's designed more for cooler weather um, and fragrances obviously perform very different uh, depending on the weather conditions. I still love this. It's still beautiful. I use this as a bedtime fragrance um, because I really only need to smell it for about 15 minutes before I fall asleep. Uh, so Amber Musk is Ambrox, Coconut Water, Rose Centifolia, Absolute, Benzoin, and Musk. Very, very beautiful, soft, ambery. Ugh, it's just beautiful. There's coconut, but it's like coconut water. It's a very watery coconut. It's not overpowering in any way. It's just beautiful. So, anyways, that is Erin Amber Musk, and that is one that I did wear to bed. 
Okay, the next two that I wore, I mixed when I wore them, and these are uh, Guerlain Aqua Allegorias. This is the Herba Fresca and the Lemon Verde. So, this is a gorgeous combination. I love wearing the Herba Fresca by itself. Um, the Lemon Verde, it can be worn by itself, definitely. It's gorgeous. It's a beautiful tart lime fragrance, but the two of these together is like magic. It smells like a, um, it smells like a true mojito because <sighs> you've got the mint and the lime. Oh, it's beautiful. So, um, Herba Fresca is grass, mint, trees, and wildflowers. And the Lemon Verde is lime, green notes, tropical fruit, fig, sugarcane, and tonka bean. And there is a note that because I had that Demeter sugarcane fragrance, I am able to detect sugarcane in a fragrance now. And you can really smell the sugarcane in the Lemon Verde. It's beautiful. It's this beautiful, fresh, Oh, it's so hard to describe sugarcane. Um, one of you just commented on my video where I hauled that Demeter fragrance. And um, they live in the Caribbean and they said that when they harvest that sugarcane, that it is the most beautiful, like comforting scent for them. Ugh, so I can only imagine because I can smell it in this Lehman Verde and I adore these fragrances. So, Aqua Allegoria, um, Herba Fresca, and Lemon Verde by Guerlain. The next one that I wore, this is probably my hands down favorite floral fragrance that I own. Um, I adore this fragrance. This is Orlov by Orlov Paris, and this is a stunning sweet floral fragrance that is expensive smelling. It's unique smelling even though it doesn't have unique notes in it at all. Uh, I've only ever smelled one other fragrance that smells like this and it is Marry Me by Lanvin. But even that, it's it smells like it but it's not a dupe. Uh, but it's close enough to it that I sold Marry Me because I had this and I really didn't need that and I knew I would never wear that when I had this. I adore this fragrance. My husband adores this fragrance. This is an absolute beast. It lasts 12 plus hours on clothing, on skin. I can spray this on and go to work and still smell it when I get home. Oh, it's gorgeous. I adore this. Um, like I say, hands down my favorite floral that I own. Um, this is bergamot zest, orange blossom, tuberose, sambac jasmine, musk, and vanilla. Nothing groundbreaking as far as the notes go, but the way that these are composed, ugh, it's just so good. And this is a, uh, the perfumer on this was Dominique Ropion, so that, I mean. And then the last fragrance I wore this week was uh, Dolce & Gabbana Light Blue Italian Zest, and I love this flanker. Oh, it's so good. This is a really, this is a really, really beautiful, bright, lemony, slightly creamy version of light blue. Um, yeah, I've put a good dent in this one too. I, yeah, I love this. Now, I did make a decant for my friend Jennifer, but it was only a 3 mil decant, so you can see I really have um, worn the heck out of this one. And I'm glad I got the big, huge bottle of this because I think this has been discontinued and I'm scared I'm going to go through it. So, Italian Zest is lemon, green apple, bellflower, lemon verbena, bergamot, bamboo, jasmine, rose, cedar, amber, musk, ISO E Super Sandalwood and Vanilla. Beautiful. If you like uh, light blue and if you like, um, well really if you like light blue and you like a little tiny bit of a gourmand uh, edge to it, the sandalwood and the vanilla and the ISO E Super which makes it a little bit woody and yeah, the amped up lemon 
I think you would really like it. It's really, really beautiful. I adore this. Uh, this one is not the best performer though. I don't wear this one to work. Um, this one I just wear when I know I'm going to be around the house so that I can uh, reapply it all day because you do really need to reapply this one every couple hours really. So anyways, that is Dolce & Gabbana Light Blue Italian Zest. And that is it for all of the fragrances that I wore last week. I hope you guys enjoyed this video. If you did, don't forget to give it a big thumbs up. Don't forget to subscribe before you leave. And I will see you in my next one. Bye!